Let's talk to um, uh, Jeffrey Podula, who's a reporter at Northwest Radio in Seattle. Jeffrey, very good morning to you. Good morning. Um, I don't know whether you're seeming, seeing the same reaction over there. I mean, some of those TikTok uh, reactions, obviously, from the United States of America, but we're getting them here as well. You know, people who are literally waking up and not going out of the house on, for fear that Donald Trump is going to, you know, lay some terrible, you know, curse on them and they're all going to drop dead as soon as they walk out the door. It's quite remarkable, isn't it, the reaction? Well, there's certainly reaction uh, on, on both sides, you know, positive for the Republicans, negative so much for the, the Democrats, but uh, social media... Uh, never really a great place to to have civil discourse uh, you, you have uh, a, a lot of people that uh, like to voice their opinions in, in a very uh, unsophisticated manner on both sides but uh, if you're looking for high-minded debate i wouldn't find it on tiktok yeah no that's not what we do here high-minded debate you know we don't kid ourselves people don't want high-minded debate that's why donald trump got elected you know the problem with high-minded debate is the people who have high-minded debate think they're better than everybody else and they think well i'm high-minded i'm clever you're stupid that's why you vote for donald trump and that's where we get to how we are now right I mean, you can make that argument. Uh, certainly, Donald Trump here in the United States has been very divisive. Uh, you know, his, his rhetoric is something that we haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, well, hang, hang on a result. minute. I mean, everybody's been divisive in America, haven't they? I mean, Kamala Harris was calling him Hitler. Um, you know, people were saying that he was a fascist. I mean, that's pretty divisive, isn't it? Well, yeah, indeed. But, I mean, in, in America was far divided long before Donald Trump came onto the scene. And, and one of the big phenomenons about that is is the fact that you know, people are, are kind of voting with their feet. They're moving to places where they're surrounded by people that agree with them. Mm. And so you don't have a lot of uh, civil discussion from people with both sides. It's an interesting social phenomenon that people can no longer be friends with someone with whom they disagree. Yes. And it, it, to me, that, that that's quite sad. Because it is sad. Uh, well, we, we, have a, we have a newspaper here, you've probably heard of it, called The Guardian. Yeah. They actually yeah. do a feature every week in their features section where they get two people going on a, a, a dinner date with each other who disagree fundamentally about some particular <laughs> political issue as if it's some kind of amazing thing. And, you know, here we are. You know, here's Henry over here who thinks that we should still be part of the European Union and here's Joanne over here um, uh, who really quite likes the independence of Britain. And, you go, and, you go, and amazingly, they were able to have lunch without killing each other. Yeah, and, and that's that's a difficult thing to find here in the United States yeah. as well. It's people are, are so polarized that uh, you can't even conceive of having a, a, a discussion, let alone a personal friendship or a personal relationship with someone who is of a different party. Yeah, right. And, I mean, Donald Trump's speech yesterday uh, was, was you know, I suppose you might describe it as a bit rambling, but but very much very Trumpian. You know, he talks about the Elon Musk spaceship coming down and being captured by, um, you know, the cradle of just like a little baby, the way you hold a baby. I mean, it was quite amusing, quite entertaining. But he also talks about healing America uh, and trying to, you know, get it back to where it used to be, where it wasn't so divided. Um, do you believe that he can do that, or does he have a chance of doing that? It, I mean, it remains to be seen. Certainly he didn't do that in his first term, um, but it, it's, he's a polarizing figure. There's, there's no doubt about that. People either really, really like him or they really, really hate him. No one has sort of a neutral opinion on Donald Trump. He right. does have an opportunity coming back into the White House for another four years to try and, and, and heal the country, but then that's something that said with every new president coming in. Mm. And over the last two decades, I'd say, uh, America has really kind of, as I said before, kind of split into the two factions, the, the conservatives and the liberals, and never the two shall meet. Right. Um, but, I mean, do you wonder whether he might have mellowed a little bit since the first term? Uh, maybe. Um, you know, it, it, it all remains to be seen. You know, I covered his convention in Milwaukee, the Republican National Convention there. That was just a few days after the assassination attempt. Right. That acceptance speech was fairly mellow to start with, and then he kind of got fired up towards the end. Uh, it was clear that that assassination attempt kind of humbled him right. for uh, at least a few days. Whether or not that sticks with him, we'll have to see. And, you know, it, there's a lot of talk about what he may or may not do when it comes to policy. But, as you know, actions speak louder than words. And it depends on how Congress is going to shape up. Obviously, the Republicans have control of the Senate. House still up for grabs as far as how much he's going to be able to get done. Yeah. I mean, also, Elon Musk is an interesting kind of factor in the whole thing, isn't it? Because the, sen the sense is that he will be given something 
uh, uh, whether it's a non-cabinet role, whether it's an official cabinet role, whether it's, you know, a kind of a envoy position or something like that. But clearly, uh, he's a great admirer of Elon Musk. Um, you think Musk is going to end up in some kind of position of power in the government? It, it you know, it, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Certainly, that's what Donald Trump has said. And, and if Donald Trump is nothing else, he rewards people who are loyal to him. Um, but as for Elon Musk, he's the richest man in the world, running Tesla, the Boring right. Company, SpaceX, and all of the others. So any job he's going to take in the federal government is going to be a serious pay cut for him. Right. What he would want there would be sort of a, a position to change regulations and, and a position to affect policy. I, Whether or not he's able to do that, we'll have to see. I would assume he would be and uh, take the Michael Bloomberg approach and just go, listen, I'll do it for a dollar. He doesn't need the money. I don't think he's, to, he's, he's not doing it for that reason, is he? Yeah. And I've got this from yeah. Norman, which is interesting. He said, people are polarised because it's no longer about left and right in politics. It's about a way of life, woke or anti-woke. And I think there's some truth to that. I think people certainly perceive uh, the breakdown now of politics as not necessarily left-wing or right-wing, but more about, you know, a belief system. Well, I would I would add one to that. Here in the United States, it, it, the, the difference is more pronounced in rural versus urban. You have the Republicans and the conservatives in the more rural parts of the country, in the rural parts of the states. The city centers, those are dominated by Democrats. And, and back to my earlier point about people, you know, moving to places that are, where they're surrounded by people with whom they agree. I mean, that's just been happening for the last 15, 20 years, mm. and it's just gotten worse and worse. And as a result, the various congressional districts are less competitive, less moderate, and they're more extreme to one side or the other. Yeah, absolutely right. And what do you think is going to be the first action of uh, Joe Biden? I mean, I don't really know what he's said or done since this was all announced. I haven't seen him. Kamala Harris took quite a long time to come out yesterday and talk about, you know, when it gets dark, you can see the stars. Uh, great. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, cheerio. See you again. Um, anything from Biden? Uh, we haven't heard anything yet. You know, since he stepped aside, it's been really kind of sort of handing the reins off to Kamala Harris. Obviously, that was late in, in the campaign. And even on Election Day, he made no public appearances. Right. Uh, certainly, you know, he's the lame duck at this point. He's only got about, I think, 65, 66 days left until he leaves office. Right. What he can get done in the meantime, not much typically. But, you know, you have a changeover in the Senate coming up on January the 3rd, so he may try to do something or another, but we'll have to wait and see. Right. But he's been laying pretty low. It's a pretty sad indictment of the American system, though, isn't it? That here you have an American president who appears to have almost no power whatsoever, uh, goes to bed at 9 o'clock because he gets very tired, doesn't seem to have much contact with his vice president who's been out busy, you know, campaigning around the country for about the last two months. You know, I mean, who's, you know, who's, who's running the shop, I suppose we would say? Well, I mean, you'd have to ask him, but, you know, anyone at the White House... Well, I would, would ask say, him, you know, but he's asleep at the moment. You know, he's, not, he's not out and about, you know. Yeah, yeah, and... and but I mean, but don't whether, you worry? You know, I mean, you're an American citizen, right, Jeffrey? Don't yeah. you worry that there isn't anybody literally at the helm? You've got a sort of clattering train, and you get up to the cockpit of the train. There's nobody. There's nobody driving it. Well, there, there's. You can make that argument that it's a bit of a rudderless ship. But the, the one thing that both parties do, presidents of both parties do, is they tend to surround themselves with competent people. And and the huge staff that operates the White House uh, certainly can keep things moving. Whether the president's, you know in bed or not or you know around the world traveling or, or whatever he happens to do campaigning um but the american system certainly as as you point out is difficult at times in a democracy often other people win and uh that's the thing that uh, democrats are having to grapple with at the moment yeah i think so jeffrey good to talk to you thanks very much indeed jeffrey podula uh, their reporter from northwest radio in seattle uh